Welcome Wargamers, Doug here from 2 Plus Tough, and today I wanted to talk about Homeworld Fleet Command, a new game by Modifius, who also made the Elder Scrolls game I've covered here before, Call to Arms, uh, Fallout, Wasteland Warfare, all of those games. This is a tabletop version of the video game series Homeworld, which you can still get. I mean, it's like a, a little bit of an older game at this point, I think it's 2010-ish, but like it holds up. I really thoroughly enjoyed the video game version, and so when they offered me a chance to like talk about the board game one, I was like, yes, I because I know the system so well I want to see how it translates into the tabletop now really quick here I just want to throw out this does feature a few different modes one there it comes with a whole bunch of like narrative style missions that match some of the things you did in the video games as well as there is a, a list building thing so you and your opponent can build like lists all the ships have point values and you can do the competitive sort of typical miniature building thing right where you build your your list of troops you go to battle and you execute a plan but there's also a solo and co-op mode meaning that if you want to give demos for your friends or have friends over to play against or play together or just play alone you can do that with this system the whole thing is designed to play in a variety of ways and on a scale of complexity i'm gonna say it's like right there next to like x-wing when it first launched by that i mean not very complex there's maybe like one or two things you need to check up on but once you like read the rule book in there it's pretty intuitive so in this video we're going to talk about homeworld fleet command we're going to look at the contents of the box i'm going to go over a few basics of the mechanics to kind of not so much like review it in the sense because i haven't really had a chance to play all that much i played the the solo versions of the narrative missions in here but the really what I want to do is get you a sense of what gameplay is like, how they took the concepts of the video game, brought it to the table, and the things that it lets you do. So with that said, let's go to the downward cam and see what you actually get. Okay, so here's our exceptional box art. And uh, I thoroughly love the way Modifius packages their games because everything has little baggies and stuff. So let's see if that holds true. We have our board. Now the board here is actually not as big as I thought it was. Let me get this out of the way. Uh, this is essentially our board. It ends like right off screen here. It is a 13, sorry, rather a 14 by nine hexagonal grid. The last side, this is just a turn tracker. It's superfluous. You don't have to use this if you don't want to, if you want to use like a diet account, the turns or something, but the everything else is the game space. We'll just set that board there and we'll keep going through. Next we have the rule book, which I have been reading feverishly because uh, I was desperate to see just how many actions you could do because I felt like in the video game wh when it came to um, controlling fleets and armadas right think Star Wars Armada the, the game or like the, the miniatures game on the tabletop or uh, even things like uh, Battlefleet Gothic those kinds of things where you're like doing naval command type stuff they were never really my favorite kind of games, except for when I played them in video games for some reason. I like the idea of these capital ships moving around. So I cracked open the rule book to see like how they articulated it. We'll get to that after we finish the unboxing part. But just to give you a sense, there's all kinds of great reference material in here. The first five scenarios are essentially like a tutorial, like a video game tutorial. They give you the core rules and they introduce concepts over time as you go through the various missions. And by the end of it, you're doing boarding actions, you're ramming at full speed, you're blowing up capital ships, engines, and all kinds of cool stuff. So we'll get to that. Here's a good close up. And I'll try to uh, get that on camera as much as possible because there's no way I can get my camera to get as good a shot as that. These are the ships you get. Obviously, you get the mothership. Each side gets one carrier, one destroyer, although they look exactly like you would expect from their various factions, the Kushan and the Taidan. And then we have uh, frigates and fighters. Both sides have 24 fighters, both sides have 12 frigates, and instead of a mothership, the Taidan have 12 corvettes. Oh, I'm sorry, they do have both of corvettes, yes. So the Kushan and the Taidan are tied here in terms of what you get, with the exception of the mothership. Now, this is one thing I'm gonna throw out there as a little spoiler for you. If you plan on painting these, and I'm gonna have a tutorial on how to very quickly and easily paint these guys, okay? For low cost, just get them done. If you're planning on painting them for the, uh, I believe it's not the mothership, but I believe it's the carrier and the destroyers, they actually have facings, meaning they have a front and a back arc. If you shoot them in the back, it destroys their engines. Uh, whereas the smaller ships don't, they don't have arcs. Instead, they just blow up really, really easy. So these are your essentially your heavy hitters and you have to use all your little guys to be able to coordinate and corral them so you can get your enemy in the guns of your big ships. Again, 
Just like Naval Warfare, I love it. It's in space. We have a whole bunch of tokens, objective markers, and, and there's not really like a ton to say here for these. Really what it is, and I'm just gonna kind of put a spread out here and I'll just pick through a few things. Um, a few of these things are obstacles, meaning asteroid fields, Certain ships have different rules for navigating those. You also have a whole bunch of these little trackers and this just lets you keep track of which fleet is which. So if you have a stat card, that stat card, like say uh, we'll do frigates. You might have a whole bunch of frigates in your fleet, but you have your one card that has all the same stats for all of them. Well, then you can put these tokens, you put a, you know, say a D next to the frigate on the field and a D next to the thing on your side of the table. It just helps you know which ship is corresponding to which uh, stat card. So that's a lot of those, honestly, because they give you so many freaking ships that to keep track of them all it is insane. Now, of course, you're not going to play with all of them all the time, always. Um, the missions dictate which ships you use and you can create your own, but you're rarely going to like feel the entire stinking fleet. This whole section here is just their modifiers, just little helpful things. Sometimes if you shoot somebody with the right kind of weapon, it can degrade their armor or their crew, which is what this looks like. Minus one, that blue symbol is the shield, and this little person symbol is the crew. Crew is important really when you want to do boarding actions, when you want to have people from your ship go over and, and destroy or take over an enemy ship. Uh, or objective, you can do that as well. So like, crew is a stat that does matter quite a bit. Here we have some stuff for uh, target locks, as well as just the various orders that you can give out to people. And some more modifiers. Again, just tokens to remind you of stuff. Uh, one thing I did want to throw out here though, yeah, this one. So this is the token that has both the different symbols for the various factions on there. One thing I'm going to bring this up when we talk about rules more is if you get priority, meaning you get to activate first, your opponent gets this token and they put it to their corresponding, you know, whatever side, and this gives you a free reroll. So you either get to move first or you get a free reroll. Those are your basically your choices. So that's a neat idea. I love whenever there's like a downside for, for choosing to go first. So we'll pop this nice plastic lid off. You see that? This is what I'm talking about when I talk about Modiphius making games so well. Nice plastic thing to keep all your pieces in. Everything is wrapped. There's like a huge stack of baggies here. You get all the dice you need. I popped these out because they were like wedged in there really well so they wouldn't move. But um, you get 12 dice. I read through the rule book and I have yet to see a situation where you'd need more than 12. There might be a circumstance where you need like 13 to 14, but this covers the overwhelming majority of what you need is 12 dice. Um, moving on here, we have a bunch of different cards. These are your squadron leader cards. And essentially the way the game works is at the beginning of a round, you're going to draw a number of cards from this deck that correspond to um, basically your, your leadership. If you have a bunch of awesome admirals and captains, you get to draw a whole bunch of order cards, and that dictates how many you can draw and how many you can play in a turn, the skill level of your leaders. So that's what these things do. They add plus one card that you can draw and plus one card to your hand, and that's what makes it an ace pilot. This is also the main way that you customize your ships. Rather than X-Wing, where they give you like a ton of different weapons, spaces, and loadouts, and options, really the main way you customize stuff is with these guys here, um, with, with changing like the nature of who's driving the ship. Here are your orders, a head full. We'll go into these in more detail. Essentially, like let's say we had Okay, so I set up this little demo here to kind of walk us through how combat works. Again, there's gonna be other variables and special rules and stuff. This is the very surface level because the game is very accessible, okay? Let's say, for example, we have our Kushan fighting our uh, Titan over here, and we have the multi-gun Corvettes for each. Sounds awesome. They have some cool weapon options on them. These are just special rules you read if you fire that particular weapon. We'll get to that later. Now, you'll notice there's a few things going on here with this table. One, we have um, our ships, the people piloting them, and your faction card. And that goes over here. Ships, faction card, people piloting them. And now, what you're going to do at the start of the round is add up all of the, uh, I believe it's called the card hand value, which is these numbers right here where there's a number and like a stack of cards. Add all those together, over here it's four, over here it's three, because they have a less experienced pilot, and um, the same thing with the numbers below them. The difference is, the top number is how many cards you can have in your hand, and the bottom number is how many you can play in a round. Now when I say play, um, there are certain cards called interrupts, they don't count against this, but it's just how many orders can you give. The more leadership your 
squadron has, the more orders you can give it, which makes a great deal of sense. We're gonna skip past that, but essentially, um, kitting out pilots and, and having really good uh, leadership and, and card hand scores are how you can use the resources of the game to you to, to win. Uh, so what we're gonna do in this example is go over here with the Kushan first, and let's say it's their turn and they play in order. It's these little tiny cards. And they're fun because they're written in a way that is meant to be very easy to understand, kind of idiot proof. You have uh, these little symbols on here and you do exactly what they say left to right. You can skip some if you want. Like if it said move, attack, move, you could skip the attack if you didn't want to, but you can't rearrange them. So you can't go move, move, attack. So left to right, skipping what you cannot do say you don't have a gun or something, or things you don't want to do. And then down below, it gives you any special rules. So both movements must be in one straight line. So that's about it. So let's do that. We're gonna go ahead and move. And as we look at our Corvette card, we see that it comes with three Corvettes, which is why both of these sides have three ships on them. So they're gonna do a full straight move. Uh, and their movement value as dictated by their card right here is two squares, or sorry, hexes. So we can go one, two, three, four. He's trying to get right up in there into the fight, set himself up for a good barrage next round. So there we go. That completes this order. It's in a straight line. And if we were to ram somebody, we would get plus one to that because that's what the card says. So now this turn ends. We go over to our Tidon player uh, and he plays an order as well. He plays target engines, which is a move and attack. Now, Target engines is special because if it were against a capital ship, it would have other special rules. Basically, this is a great card for crippling the big, big ships. Not worried about that right now. We're just gonna stick with the move and attack aspect. They get to uh, move, which is they also have a movement of two, and then attack, and we see their attack range if we look at their weapons. It's a light projectile cannon that has a range of one. So they're gonna move to here, face the enemy, and fire. Now, learning how to read these cards is really what it, it's all about. So we have our light projectile cannon. This little red symbol matches one up here. It says two. So we're gonna get two, and that's a slash sign per Corvette. Okay, it, it's written very awkwardly, I know, but because you can lose ships from a particular unit, it, it kind of matters. So two dice per Corvette. So we've got three of them. That adds up to six dice total. And they're gonna fire at the other enemy. Now, to hit, I need a five or better as indicated right there on the card. That is its attack value. So we're gonna roll these suckers and hot diggity, that was a good shot. Now, he does also have the rule rapid fire one. When attacking, and it lists off a few different chip types of which our enemy is one, this unit can reroll one failure. So we'll reroll a failure. Hey, 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 pulled another six out of that. And we'll just compare. So we have, God, four sixes and a five. I need this more when I play my bone splitters for Age of Sigmar, but here we are, five successes. Now we look at our enemy over here, the target of our ire, and they have a shield of one, which means we're going to cancel out one of those successes. That is a flat thing, and there's ways to get more shielding, like your guys brace for impact, um, trying to fire through obstacles and enemy and, and other ships will also increase your defensive score. This was a particularly fire roll, so <laughs> please don't let that uh, dissuade you here. I'm gonna go ahead and change these just for the purposes of examples. So now in this case, we have two successes and two failures after armor has removed one of them. We'll take these and we destroy two ships. Now again, particularly fiery roll there, but uh, that is essentially how combat works. It's just comparing your attack score, five up, to the defense score, in this case, one for both of them. This fight's not very exciting because they are exact, you know, copies of each other. And of course, now this has set them up to be shot from behind. If I have more guys over on the uh, Kushan side, they can come in and counter attack and that kind of thing. There's also some really cool stuff in the game called interrupts. So when our Tidon player played target engines, right? He threw that card down. The Kashan player, if he had a interrupt card in his hand, could respond to that. And basically the, the wording in the rule book is very clear. The universe pauses in its nature for the interrupt to be resolved. They're never anything complicated. They don't take a lot of time. It's not like it's ruining the flow of the game, but what it does is give you a chance to brace for impact, counter assault, maybe uh, if he could counter fire, he could take out maybe a ship and that would affect the dice pool kind of a thing. All those abilities exist and, and they're great for that reason. A lot of tactical flexibility. But as you can see, this is the core of the game and it's very simple. Where the depth comes from is when you start mixing in obviously different kinds of ships, because one thing I didn't really show 
was that even though there's only like three or uh, what four different kinds of ships modeled, they give you cards for all different kinds of loadouts. There's interceptors, scouts, attack bombers, defenders. There's different variations of corvettes. So even though you're using the same miniatures, the actual stat line, there's, there's I count 14 kinds of different units for at least um, the Kushan side, never mind the, the actual home world itself, uh, the home base there. So like there's a lot of options when it comes to how you kit your stuff out. Some of them just have different guns than each other and you have to weigh the balances there. When you factor in what ship you're using and then you have to add on the correct We'll say uh, leader, you know, these squadron leaders who give you your card and hand bonus, that's super important. Then you can also factor in other stuff like, uh, for example, the nature of the board. There's going to be a obstacles, objectives. Some of the objectives are there's a, a third, you know, NPC on the board right here, and both teams are fighting to capture them. And like I said before, I don't normally cover these kinds of games, like with ships and stuff like that. Normally I like fighters, right? Like skirmish games and that kind of thing. But the reason I like this one is one, it is in insanely fast okay this is a brutal game when i you know you just saw me destroy two corvettes here with corvettes of course but like the, the fighters they come in i think packs of six they die in droves it's so stinking fun like it's just it's very engaging and i love it there's stuff where you can deploy um basically orbital defense like almost like mines and so if anything gets near the mine it explodes there's all kinds of fun stuff. Now, in addition to just attacking, there's also ramming speed. You can crash into people. There's boarding actions. There's ways to mitigate and kind of have your guys go off and mitigate damage by doing repairs. Uh, you can have ships deploy from the big homeworld uh, mothership. That's what it's called. So like if you're playing with this guy on the table, it counts as like this little docking bay is where all your fleet comes from. So if he's here, anything can deploy from where like he is within a hex. There's also ways to assault this to shut that door. Same thing with the carrier. It's just, there's just a lot of cool stuff. And what I like about it is, uh, as opposed to the Skyrim tabletop game, which just felt very overwhelming. There's still a lot of stuff. This one is very minimalist in the sense of, it feels like when I got my first copy of, of X-Wing, where it's just like, all the rules make sense. It's very straightforward. Here's what you get. And here's a bunch of ways to actually play the game. The only thing I could say as a downside is though, is because some of the uh, advanced rules are spread out throughout those first five tutorial missions, it can kind of be a pain on, on where to find the rules, but there is a handy little thing. There's uh, all different kinds of weapons and rules, everything from drones, turrets, all that kind of stuff. Uh, some ships have firing arcs, or I should say some weapons have firing arcs. Um, and then some ships have engines you have to worry about. Here's the section for ramming, which I am all about. And uh, yeah, no, I just, I think it's a really cool game. If you wanted to save life, you could even move your crew from one damaged ship onto a healthy ship. It increases the crew value, which makes you really, really good at boarding actions. So now you have a missile, you can go in there and start taking out enemy ships just by ramming into them really hard with a bunch of guys. And um, as I'm just gonna flip through some of the scenarios so you can see the different ways that things are laid out. This is essentially having us like with a, a row of, uh, these are mines, yes, these are all mines. So you have to get through the minefield uh, to destroy the ships behind it. Here is a small fleet attacking the home world and the home world is going to be able to vomit out a bunch of those little fighters to defend itself. So around this, every hex, it can spit out a group of six of these little interceptors and fighters. That's so cool. Uh, here we're trying to invade airspace or at least keep people out of our airspace. Again, you can see the different uh, scenario deployments and that kind of stuff. And, and it just, it is very simple and very fun. Now here's where it comes to designing scenarios. And I like this part of the book, not just does it come with a bunch of scenarios for you to play, but it gives you a sort of a generator so you can make up your own missions. You can roll these six sided dice and pretty much come up with anything you want in terms of deployment zones, um, there is the rating system. So every ship and commander has this little, let me see here, a star value at the top. Those are essentially your points cost. When you go to build your list, uh, you can just build according to whatever you want. And it's got your little calculator here. So if you're playing a total of 10, you wanna destroy four points worth of opponent stuff. And then if you score six, destroy six, stars worth of ships, you get all kinds of other extra bonus objectives. Then you have the rules for solo and cooperative play. The only thing I'll say about this is the the AI, so to speak, doesn't make great use of interrupts. Um, it, it, there's some that it does make sense for, but others I'm like, uh, but that's all right. That's all right. I, I don't expect that much out of it. And then it goes into um, just 
nice little quick things. There is an enemy behavioral table, so at least you're not like doing a formulaic thing. So that's quite nice. And then your reference stuff. And I actually spent a lot of time on this page. This is the last page, by the way, because there's so many symbols that just having this as a reference is so helpful. And then a nice little summary on the back. Honestly, it's so intuitive that once you learn where to look for things and what stats you need, this is realistically all you need. By the end of the fifth uh, tutorial mission thing, this was all I was using and it went really well. So friends, that is Homeworld Fleet Command. Thank you so much to Modifius for sending me out a copy. It really is a cool game and it is certainly the kind of size and, and time frame that is my kind of game, right? I think uh, I did a co-op one and I, I cranked it out and I think 40 minutes or something like that. It's brutal. Like these ships just annihilate each other once you learn all the different like special rules. Because at first I was like, man, this is, it's taking a while to kind of take out some of these little guys. And then I misunderstood. I thought like, I don't know, I was way overthinking it <laughs> they just straight up die <laughs> and i love it as far as like um i'm gonna call it like equivalent to like naval combat game all right they're big capital ships with little stuff in between it's a it's a type of game a fleet game right based command game where i i like this one because one i like hexes over three-dimensional movement with those kinds of games and two the the stats where they're located and what you need to reference are very intuitive like i can't emphasize that enough it's very very intuitive and so uh, i was able to like lay down in bed the other night and just well, well the other night when i first opened this box a while ago I just kind of laid there and i just read the entire rule book cover to cover and i understood the very basics of the game and was able to jump in the next morning like i said i am going to have a tutorial video a very short and sweet one about ways to paint up these ships very quickly uh just to a very base tabletop standard if you want to see that video check out the description below to see if it's been uploaded i will have a link to it there if you're interested in this game please consider supporting the kickstarter for modifius and homeworld fleet command coming to you very soon to kickstarter thank you all for watching and happy wargaming